Last week, the Fed released the minutes of their latest meeting, which is what they talked about behind closed doors. The main message is that they want to be cautious about lowering rates too quickly, which I think is smart. In this video, I'm going to explain why they want to do that and what it means for the markets in a way that makes it easy to understand. Actually, you know what? If this isn't the simplest explanation of the Fed's motivations that you've ever heard, I want you to give this video a thumbs down and don't hit the subscribe button. People love to pour over every word that the Fed says in every meeting and try to guess the hidden meaning of every phrase, but it really doesn't need to be that complicated. The Fed only cares about two things, jobs and inflation. They want lots of jobs and low inflation, 2% inflation to be specific. If the job market is weak because companies can't afford to pay workers, they lower interest rates and make it cheaper for them to borrow money. That helps the economy recover and more people get jobs. On the other hand, if inflation is too high, they raise interest rates to help bring it down. The way it works is that raising rates makes it more expensive to borrow money. So not as many consumers and businesses will do it. If there's less money available to buy stuff, companies won't be able to raise their prices as fast and inflation will go down. So going back to the two things the Fed cares about, the job market is really strong right now, as strong as it's been in about 50 years. So right now there's no reason for them to lower rates to support the job market. On the other hand, inflation is still higher than their 2% target. So there's an incentive for them to keep interest rates high. That's the main reason they need to be cautious about how fast they lower interest rates. The other reason is their credibility. Think about how interest rates control inflation. They don't control it directly, right? The Fed just gives incentives to spend a little more or spend a little less. And then that impacts inflation. Well, it's a lot easier to get people to do what you want if you're trustworthy. Imagine you have a friend who's always late. If they tell you to meet them for dinner at 7.30, are you gonna put in the maximum effort to be there on time or will you assume they might be a few minutes late? Probably assume they'll be late, right? So they may want you to get there at 7.30, but their ability to influence your actions is limited because they've given you a reason not to believe them. In the case of the Federal Reserve, they wanna get inflation back down to 2%. The way they do that is by influencing people to make decisions that will make that happen. For example, a company might only raise their prices by 2% if they expect that inflation will be 2%. But if they don't trust the Fed to do what they say they're gonna do and get inflation down, then maybe they'd raise their prices by 4%. Rising prices is inflation, so that's why their credibility is so important. One of the main ways they get inflation to go down is by getting people to believe that they will get inflation down. If you believe your friend will show up at 7.30, you will too. So the Fed maintains their credibility by doing what they say they're gonna do. They say they're gonna get inflation down to 2%, and so if they start cutting interest rates a lot before inflation gets down to 2%, then why would anyone trust them anymore? That is why the Fed wants to be cautious about how quickly they lower interest rates. Lower interest rates lead to higher inflation, and they want inflation to go down. They may lower interest rates before inflation goes down to 2%, but only if they're confident that's gonna keep falling to 2% anyway. As for the impacts on investments, here's the simple version of how I think interest rates could impact stocks, bonds, and housing markets in 2024. When it comes to the stock market, investors love lower interest rates. Lower rates lead to more jobs and a stronger economy, right? So often, they also lead to more profits and higher stock prices. Well. I think the stock market is likely to be disappointed later this year. I see this going one of two ways. If the economy stays strong and profits stay high, inflation will probably also stay high. And then so will interest rates. If the economy weakens more than expected, the Fed will probably cut interest rates, but company profits might also be weak. So right now, investors think they can have it all. They think they can eat all the cake they want and still have a six pack. What I'm saying is that they can probably only have one or the other. Either they get strong profits, but don't get the interest rate cuts they expect, or they get the interest rate cuts, but don't get the strong profits. Either way, it could lead to a rocky stock market in 2024. Then when the election starts dominating the headlines, that's when the real fun will begin. Hopefully, you'll join me for it. As far as the bond market goes, if interest rates stay higher for longer than expected, that would not be good for intermediate and long-term bonds. I said I liked short-term bonds better in my 2024 bond market outlook, and guess what? They're up while long-term bonds are down this year. If rates stay high, that trend could continue. When it comes to real estate, don't get too caught up in the sensationalist lies from people who tell you the housing market's gonna crash or skyrocket based on some minor detail about interest rates. Like I said in my 2024 housing market outlook, the big picture is that over the next few years, interest rates are very likely to fall and houses are very likely to get more affordable, even if prices go up. For some perspective, on a 30-year mortgage, a 1% fall in interest rates is the equivalent of about a 10% fall in the price of the home when it comes to affordability. Interest rates matter way more than home prices. So if you're looking to buy that first home, keep saving and keep the faith. 
If this is your first time here, let me explain how this channel works. Unlike most finance channels, Fundamentals of Finance is run by two experienced investment professionals. We aim to bring you professional investment insights that are simple to understand so that you can become a better investor. I also have a free Discord with over 50 people in it. If you want to join that, the link is below in the description. Thanks for watching.